In July, people in Shanghai, China's richest city, saw a number of banks restrict ATMs that usually allow both deposits and withdrawals. Customers are left with one feature: to either deposit or withdraw cash, but not both. According to reporters from the Shanghai Morning Post, in addition to the Agricultural Bank, the field assessment of 20 bank ATMs of 14 leading banks found that only five function normally, seven have restricted functions, some have shortened hours, and more than half of the bank's ATMs are paralyzed and not working. One user described her experience as. The day before yesterday, I withdrew money from the Pudong Development Bank ATM machine, waiting in line for more than 20 minutes under the heat of 36 degrees Celsius. Upon getting in, after a flurry of operations on the machine, I found out I could not withdraw money at all. And only after consulting a bank employee did I learn that the machine could only deposit money and could not withdraw money. For restricted functions of bank ATMs, many people have complained about withdrawing money. A member of the public told reporters, "I've encountered long queues twice for withdrawals. I needed cash quickly and just wanted to withdraw 200 RMB, but I ended up waiting in line for half an hour." In response to an inquiry from a local media reporter, the person in charge of a branch of the Agricultural Bank of China in Shanghai said that both ATMs were emptied out that day. The staff of several banks, including the Industrial and Commercial Bank and the Agricultural Bank, said that one of the reasons for the high number of ATM failures was that all the money had been taken out, and there was no time to refill the machine. And some machines were under routine maintenance. This may be a relatively honest answer. Later on, several banks in Shanghai claimed that this special separation of deposits and withdrawals was mainly due to epidemic prevention requirements, so it could prevent unsterilized bills from entering the market. While depositors can go to the branches to take out their money, they have to wait in long lines. When there are many customers, banks usually give out a limited set of service numbers, thus capping the amount of money that can be withdrawn. Banks in China have the lowest capital available in over 30 years. They also face a wave of stressed borrowers. Local government revenues have fallen sharply due to reduced economic activity from the COVID-19 epidemic, as well as the real estate slump. The real estate sector, which accounts for about 30 percent of China's GDP, is under tremendous pressure, and buyers and developers are feeling the pinch. In other words, just when banks need capital the most, their capital levels are at the lowest they have been in years. Parallel to the inability to withdraw money from ATMs, a large number of people in China are finding their bank cards frozen for no apparent reason. Look, this bank is flooded with customers who come to unfreeze their bank cards. Just yesterday, I still had funds in my bank card, but suddenly I couldn't make a normal payment. I can only deposit money, not withdraw cash. Now I come to the bank to unlock the card. I have waited for a full two hours. The efficiency of this bank is indeed a bit slow, but now I finally fixed it. Yesterday, my bank card suddenly stopped working. I couldn't use it. I was shopping and tried to swipe the card, but it wouldn't work. The machine indicated your bank card has abnormalities. I immediately deposit some money into the card. It can accept deposits. Ah, very strange. Then I wanted to transfer money out, but it wouldn't allow me. Then it indicates your card has an abnormality and is suspended. It is simply not working now. The bank does not notify us at all. I was scared when I suddenly encountered this situation. I thought something terrible had happened because I had funds in the card. Today, I rushed to ICBC and waited in line. I was surprised to see all the people inside doing the same thing. I am not the only one experiencing this problem. Many are in this situation. Ah. Ah, they're scared. They're all very scared. Yesterday, when I went to buy things, I had to pay with credit card. Last night, when my husband was paying for something, it suddenly showed that the bank card was abnormal. We were very confused. Early this morning, he went to the bank and waited in line. He texted me that there were over a hundred people there trying to unfreeze their bank cards. He wanted me to check if my bank card was frozen. 
My husband came out of the bank, but the problem hasn't been solved. We showed our ID cards, bank cards, and other paperwork, but the bank said it would take half a month to finish the process. It's just too difficult. Now we're using cell phones to make all the payments. We have no cash on us. It's going to be like this for half a month. I don't know if you have encountered this situation. I have no idea why this is happening. The bank has no communication and no phone call to notify us. It freezes our card for no reason. Our life is really not easy. Two weeks ago, my ICBC card was also frozen for no reason, without any explanation. ICBC, China Merchants Bank, Agricultural Bank, many people have told me that they have all been freezing people's bank cards for no reason. I went to the bank and waited in line for more than two hours to fill out the information, but I didn't think that after 18 days have passed, today the card still hasn't been unfrozen. Since 2021, many people's bank cards have been frozen for no reason, and the man in the video has had his card frozen since May of 2021. I was told by customer service that my card had been frozen and I didn't know why, so I went to the bank counter for help. The teller said that my card was frozen by the public security authorities, specifically because of a certain transaction in my account, which was suspected of cyber fraud. The teller then handed me a bank notice. The note indicates that the freeze period is half a year, that is six months. From May, when the card was frozen to November, I thought I didn't do anything illegal and criminal, so I let it go, thinking the card would be unfrozen by November. The man thought the matter was over and didn't expect more mishaps to follow. Now I received several messages on my cell phone from banks, including Bank of China, Bank of Construction, Bank of Communications, and Industrial Commercial Bank. Several banks have sent me messages claiming that there are accounts under my name that are suspected of illegal criminal activity and that these bank accounts have been frozen. Now he needs to deal with the Public Security Bureau where the account opening banks are located in order to completely resolve this inexplicable accident. Account managers at several banks in Beijing, Shandong Province and Hainan Province said that this move was mainly a measure taken to cooperate with the Ministry of Public Security's card suspension campaign. The card suspension campaign was launched nationwide by the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology and the Ministry of Public Security on October 10, 2020, claiming that it was a campaign to combat new types of illegal crimes in the telecommunications network. However, it seems that the peak of this action was after May 2022, which coincided with the storm of homeowners stopping paying mortgages in many parts of China, causing banks to tighten their purse strings. Many people suspect that banks are using the card suspension as an excuse to solve their own cash flow problems. A month further back since mid-April, a large number of deposits were frozen at Henan Village Bank, with many non-local depositors operating through online banking systems. At that time, the media had reported that incidents of bank failures or shortages of funds had spread to the four largest banks in China. As the safest option of savings or funds are now facing the danger of not being able to withdraw the financial wealth management products launched by various banks or financial platforms in China are being defaulted even more, involving not only the interest but also the principal. <laughs> Sooning finance, not pay out money, and screw people over. This is the city of Chongqing, where depositors are protesting against the bank's wealth management products that have wiped out their deposits. China Life Insurance Company, give me back my deposit. China Life, give me back my deposit. China Life, give me back my deposit. China Life Insurance Company is a state-owned mega financial and insurance enterprise headquartered in Beijing, one of the top 500 companies in the world and one of the top 500 Chinese brands. It's a financial corporation of the central government. But now, the customer needs to get down on their knees and ask for the return of their principal deposit. There may be Chinese at home and abroad who are worried that the bank has no money. 
In July, the Bank of China branch in the downtown area of Sydney, Haymarket, was visible for several days. There were dozens of people crowded outside the gate of the bank, and many passers-by were deeply curious. Reddit users believe that students from China are scrambling to withdraw their deposits because they are worried that the overseas branches of Chinese banks might also freeze their accounts, leaving them to fall victim to the banks and to have problems withdrawing cash. A spokesman for the Sydney branch stated that it was business as usual and that the long lines outside were indeed students, stressing that it had nothing to do with the village bank fraud in Henan. A small number of alert Chinese are already on the move. As part of a guide to surviving the chaos, people are starting to think about taking some of their money out of the bank and storing it at home. This article on 163.com reads, You can get a secret cabinet at home to hide money, such as a secret layer inside the closet. Remove a board and there is a space underneath to store money, and thieves will not know when they come. These smart children are most worried about their parents who watch the news on national television every day and believe that there is no crisis in China and that even if there is, the party has ways to deal with it. We kept implementing the policy of granting deferral of principal and interest repayments and guiding banking and insurance institutions to take the initiative to make arrangements for sustained financing to ease the financial burden on enterprises in troubled industries and stabilize their employment and support appropriately forward-looking projects of infrastructure construction. In future, we will help transform and upgrade the economy and promote high-quality development. So this article offered a tip. You go to the senior centers or nursing homes in many neighborhoods. You will often see the volunteers who help the elderly to take their blood pressure, spend time with a lonely chatting, and organize various fun activities. If you ask these kinds of friends around the elderly to spread the news that money in the bank cannot be taken out, they will believe it. This may have a small chance of success, and the article very rationally advises these children to be mentally prepared. Your parents' money is theirs, and they have the right to decide. If they want to pay the price for their beliefs or make sacrifices, it's the price they have to pay. On July 28, the Consumer Rights Protection Bureau of the China Banking Regulatory Commission (CBRC) issued a circular on consumer complaints in the banking industry in the first quarter of 2022. The briefing said that in the first quarter of 2022, the CBRC and its field offices received and referred a total of 75,936 consumer complaints in the banking industry. Among them, 20,209 cases involve large state-owned banks, accounting for 26.6% of the total number of complaints. 29,393 cases involve joint stock banks, accounting for 38.7% of the complaints and 345 cases involve foreign incorporated banks, accounting for 0.5% of the total number of complaints. Let's take a look at the ranking of China's state-owned banks on this bank blacklist. The first one is the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, followed by the Bank of Communications, Bank of Agriculture, Construction Bank, Post Office Savings Bank, and the last one is the Bank of China. <laughs> I was supposed to buy a home today. Tomorrow, I need to transfer 2 million RMB out. The bank needs to see my purchasing contract. After reviewing the contract, he asked for the neighborhood's phone number. He called, but the neighborhood doesn't even know me. They don't know me, so I can't get the money transferred. It's my own money, and I have free reign. I'll spend it wherever I like. Do I need to have the consent of the neighborhood to access the funds? It's absurd. I have to deposit tens of millions of RMB into ICBC every year. Who would deposit money if you do this now? I would feed my money to a dog rather than deposit it in ICBC. What a piece of crap. You might as well close down. I can't even take out my own money. Although official figures from the Communist Party show that China's banks are in good shape, with low non-performing loans and manageable risks, their loan growth remains within regulatory limits and deposits continue to grow. However, the veracity of such data has always been questioned by outsiders. China's banking system is said to have too many holes and room for corruption. 
For example, China's overly flexible loan classification allows banks to set up their own loan criteria for what would be classified as non-performing. These criteria would not have passed regulatory scrutiny in other countries, and it's a fact they openly admit. In most jurisdictions, a 90-day late interest payment will change the classification of a loan, but some Chinese banks say they will not change the classification to delinquent until the borrower's business has been suspended for at least six months. Banks in China are highly leveraged, which means that there is actually a shortage of capital in the banks. The weighted reserve ratio of all Chinese banks is only 8.4% of total capital, and the figure of 8.4% is also from the original official. The actual ratio may be lower. Beijing's years of rapid fiscal and monetary policy expansion to support economic growth has also led to excessive borrowing and high property prices. A Ponzi scheme that perhaps the CCP once thought could continue, but with such a fragile economic system, once it encounters any trouble, then the crisis will suddenly appear. Now China's banking industry has been deeply tied to the real estate economy and will collapse with the burst of the real estate bubble. Indicators of China's real estate market plummeted in July. Liu Ting, chief China economic expert at Nomura Securities, said in an article that the revenue from land sales by local governments this year may be cut in half, and the real estate combined with the impact of the economic downturn will cause the fiscal shortfall of the Chinese local government to reach about U.S. 889.6 billion this year. The expert said that the root cause of the slump in new home sales was residents' concerns that the real estate companies could not fulfill their promises to deliver homes. The knock-on effect of the drop in new home sales is a slump in land sales. That is to say, the storm of unfinished buildings has already started, and people have decided to stop repaying their mortgages. The rest of the consumers have no intention to buy homes and take out loans. The capital chain in the financial system of the Chinese Communist Party has suddenly broken. The international environment is no longer rosy either. For years, China has benefited from a business cycle that has kept pace with the U.S. However, with inflation nearing double digits, the U.S. is now rapidly tightening monetary policy. As interest rates in China and the U.S. converge, there is more incentive for capital to flee China. And while China's banks have tightened restrictions on dollar outflows, this has not stopped the outflow. Now, Beijing's options are limited. Recapitalizing the banks would require a lot of money. Which would lead to severe inflation or depreciation of the RMB against the dollar. There doesn't look to be a good way out because the window of opportunity that would have gotten rid of the problem has passed.